Jeg ligger her i en park i det indre Paris, hvor jeg har tilbragt natten sammen med en gruppe. Den er samlet fra alle hjørner af Frankrig for at mødes her i Paris på Bastilledagen for 6 dage siden den 14. juli, hvor de vil lave en revolution. En revolution, der endnu en gang skulle vælte regeringen og tage magten tilbage til folket, som det skete for første gang i 1789 her i Paris. Jeg er Mathieu, jeg er fra de Alps. Jeg er Pierre, jeg er fra Belgium. Mit navn er Karin, jeg er fra Pau. Mit navn er Duart Montero. Jeg er fra Toulouse for at lave en pacifisk revolution. Vi er i Paris. A pacific revolution. Pacific revolution. Pacific okay. and humanist revolution. And that that's already uh, sounding strange in my ears because when I think about a revolution, I think about especially a French revolution. I think about heads rolling and blood floating in the streets. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we we really think that uh, violence just can. Uh, can uh, create violence and we really want to create another world. C'est quoi ce délire vous avez vu comment on est traité Nobody can stop an idea with started to to work. It's working, oh, to hold. I am the ID, you are the ID now. And you, you will share with each people we, you meet because you have this, you are this ID, you know. It's just, wow! <laughs> it's starting, starting a fire, lighting a fire, like that, you know, boom! An ID can't be stopped. No. But no. What, what is the ID? It's, it's a perception of, uh, of, of the all, the feeling of the all. This one is the movement. Yeah, is the movement for the the freedom of people, if you want. Okay. But we have legally create a, a second government because this one is, is illegitimate. Comment l'hostilité c'est mort, c'est mort. Donc on va décider ce qu'on va faire. On va décider ensemble. On va on va en parler. On va faire passer le mot parmi les gens qui sont ici. On va calmer le truc. In 2005, here in France, the, there was a referendum for the European Constitution. Most of uh, French people said, no, we don't want a uh, European Constitution. Uh, 55%. Sarkozy take one to three years and Sign the constitution. So people say no. But he does it anyway. He does it anyway. At this moment, government is illeg illegitimate for the people. At this moment. Uh, Be because uh, people, of people, people of the country say no. I if they say yes yeah. and he don't make it, it was the same. We create an, another one for to to represent the 55% of French. It's legal. It's on. It's in our constitution. It's getting the power back to the people. Yes. Yeah. You want to say it? Den her skide mule, den øh, volder mig godt nok mere besvær for tiden, end den er til gavn. Nu har jeg lige ventet i øh, Paris i to uger på at få en ny, øh, et nyt stel sendt ned, fordi det gamle gik i stykker. Og øh, nu på vejen igen, der skal jeg hele tiden rute efter nogle steder, hvor jeg kan have den med. Jeg kan ikke gå øh, langs motorveje og den slags, fordi at den fylder for meget i kanten, så jeg bliver hele tiden afbrudt af trafikken. 
fordi jeg skal trække ind til siden. Så jeg holder mig fra store veje, områder efter små offroadede veje. Men der er der nogle gange, hvor, øh, hvor, den, hvor det slet ikke er terræn, det ikke er tilgængeligt til jul. Øh, I dag der oplever jeg for eksempel, jeg et langt stykke må gå med en jernbane her, ikke også? Øh, hvor det er sådan noget terræn her, som ikke er særlig godt at gå i. Og der skal jeg tænke på, at det slider på den mule, fordi jeg ikke vil have vognen bryder sammen igen, og jeg skal vente to uger igen på at få et nyt stel. Nogle steder der, øh, der er der sådan noget, som du kan se derhenne, der er det simpelthen en øh, trappeovergang over et jernbanespor. Det kan jeg heller ikke få den mule med henover, så der må område store øh, ruter for at og komme en anden vej over sporene. Den er virkelig, virkelig øh, godt nok øh, ikke særlig øh, populær hos mig lige for tiden, må jeg sige. Nu står vi her og øh, kan ikke rigtig komme igennem. Havde jeg nu kun været på gåben, så ville jeg øh, gå langs hegnet igennem alt det her. Men med en mule, det er ikke til. Det er ikke til at komme over hegnet her. Havde jeg været på gåben bare, så ville jeg kunne komme over derhen. Der er sådan en lille, øh, lille hul i hegnet, som man lige kan kravle igennem. Men ikke med en mule. Jeg tror, at vores eneste alternativ er enten at gå langt, langt tilbage igen og finde en vej, men det gider vi fandme ikke. Så vi går ned, øh, vi går ned langs skinnerne her, og så, øh, så må det bare slide på vognen. Det er der fandme ikke noget at gøre ved. Vi skal fremad. Yes. Jeg ved sgu ikke, hvor, lang, vejen den, øh, hvor langt jeg skal gå, før jeg kommer til et sted, hvor jeg kan komme op. Fordi at når der går sådan en bro derovre, der er en gangbro, så ser det ud som om, at der ikke er, øh, er noget i det her plan, i den næste lange stykke tid i hvert fald. Men øh, nu må vi se. Kommer der et sted her, hvor jeg tror, måske, at jeg kan komme op? Det er godt nok lidt stejl, men øh, hvis, øh, hvis det hegn, man kan se op, det slutter lige efter, så, øh, så vil jeg prøve at slæbe mulen op igennem. Men først så går jeg altså lige op uden mule og kigger, om det overhovedet er sådan, eller hvad? Nej, det har en det fortsat skulle hele vejen. Så vi fortsætter. Til gengæld så var der nogle brumbær op, Men de er over det hele. Vi slap vi skud på den anden side. Man, og de her nye støvler ikke de er udmærket at gå i, men de er bare ikke langskaftede nok. De bliver ved med at komme alt muligt, falde alt muligt lort ned i dem, småsten og jeg ved ikke hvad. <laughs> like a challenge with uh, all the people in the house and everybody uh, do his part ah. and it's uh, just like uh, which which one going to have the the best most, harvest the best potatoes and <laughs> the, the most semi potatoes every day <laughs> to speak with them to and speak with them yeah i speak with them what do potatoes. you what do you tell them then uh, they are beautiful They are really nice, <laughs> and they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Hot shower you have here? Normally. Yeah. But most of the time it's cold <laughs> because uh, there is not uh, sufficiently uh, sun. Oh, uh, there's so not enough sun. 
Hmm. Yeah. But it's okay. Who is sleeping out here? Sleeping where? Here. <laughs> I sleep here. You sleep there? Yeah, yeah. it's my own. Yeah, because there is no more place in the No more house. rooms? Yeah, so... Yeah, that's my... Uh, Were you the last one who moved in? Hmm? You're the last one who moved in? Uh, yeah, but uh, I like. How long ago is that? Um, four months. Okay. Month. Yeah. So I buy this one and uh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it got everything you need. Hmm? It, you just need like a room to go to your own place. Yeah. So it's yeah. just as good as the house if you have the kitchen and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all right. I didn't try for the winter, so I'm going to see if <laughs> I have a, not oven, but um, radiator thing. Something to be, mm -hmm. to have a hot uh, weather. And a greenhouse? Yeah. Homemade? Uh, JB. JB, Julien. So, JB. Uh, make this mm. just to put a lot of um, it looks uh, very organized very yeah. spacey with <laughs> yeah. is that for the birds no it's just uh, beautiful okay <laughs> it's, um, artistic okay <laughs> okay he finds he find that in, um, in uh, you know a then he has a stack here place. so he can hang them <laughs> whenever he feels like <laughs> okay and, uh, that's interesting it's, it's really Good garden. That's a um, wine cellar. Yeah, but in fact, there is ah! not wine <laughs> because that is completely empty <laughs> and that's one too. So maybe we have 10 bottles. <laughs> oh, because we don't have uh, because you drink it too fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My name is Mickey from France. One champi, two champi, three champi. <laughs> en sådan der. Når man skal sige farvel til sin lille bejse. <laughs> Men nu kommer min far jo også og besøger mig på et tidspunkt. Siger han da. Let's not see. Yo. Nå, du har fået sladder allerede, inden jeg selv giver dig den. <laughs> Nej, det var, ikke, det var ikke helt den samme, som jeg havde før. Men øh, det var næsten. Jo, men det er også spørgsmål om... Om det overhovedet er nogen god idé, fordi at, øh, fordi at øh, den fylder jo, og det er ikke fordi, at den er så praktisk. Jeg har en anden en, som er praktisk, sådan en kasket med sådan noget skygge i nakken. Jamen det har jeg. Jeg har en, der er god til det. Den anden, her, den anden hat, det er mere bare sådan øh, til pølt. Jamen sådan er det ude i den barske natur, der er masser af spetakke. <laughs> skratter det. Nu synes jeg også, du skratter. Hvad er det for en skratten fra dig? Er det for kølet? Oh, I come <laughs> Katie and me, we met first time in '65, and uh, I am German, and she is Fre she was she is French, and uh, our parents have fought during the war on different sides. Before I came over, I still didn't know how my father-in-law would re receive me in peace or with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> And then you've been living happily ever after. Yes. yes. And you have like now 
like uh, in the fairy tales and they yeah. had many many children and they were <laughs> happy <laughs> all their life <laughs> The people rush, busy, busy, for their jobs. On my left, the river flows, slowly, knows what way to go. Underneath, my mule at rest, in the shadow, of my nest in my hammock high above where I'm slowly waking up rocking here from left to right easy happy I decide that my bus will sure agree. Wednesday is my morning free. <laughs> Godmorgen. Jeg ligger her og daser i min hængekøje uden for Chaumont sur Loire i Frankrig mellem uh, Orléans og Tours. Og uh, jeg tænker, at jeg lige vil uh, forklare lidt om hvordan jeg bedst muligt sover komfortabel i den hængekøje her. Jeg har en øh, luftmadras under mig, som ligger, øh, som ligger i bunden, og det gør både, at jeg har, øh, jeg har noget varme under mig, som gør, at øh, det isolerer for luften, der er under, under køjen, og så gør det, at den bliver spredt lidt ud, så det ikke bliver sådan en lille øh, indelukket hul, man ligger i. Men den her luftmadras, den er faktisk ikke videre behagelig at ligge sådan her på hele natten, som jeg ligger nu, helt straight. Fordi at, øh, så får man ligesom ens hoved løftet for meget op. Så det jeg gør, for at ligge mest muligt behageligt, det er, at jeg ligger mig sådan her skråt. Så jeg egentlig, jeg egentlig ligger med hovedet Nede ved siden af luftmadrassen her på den ene side. Og så ligger med benene ved siden af luftmadrassen på den anden side. Og så, øh, så ligger jeg bare øh, med, altså med hovedparten af, af kroppen sådan skråt henover. Når man hænger den op, så er det rast at ligge på en måde, hvor, øh, hvor hovedet det ligger længst nedad. Ikke helt vildt meget, den skal være sådan nogenlunde lige. Men hvis du hænger den op, så, øh, så, den, så den alligevel er lidt højere i den ene side. Og du ligger der med, med hovedet i den, i den høje ende. Så vil du opleve, at du i løbet af natten falder længere og længere nedad i, øh, i undersiden af hængekøjen. Øhm, og det er ikke særlig rart. Så ligger der med hovedet i den lave ende, så er dine ben også eleveret en lille smule. Og det er en god idé, at de er der om natten, hvis man er ude at gå. Det, det har de faktisk godt af. Den lærer min sokker. Der. I dag der går turen til Tour, tour i Frankrig. Og der har jeg et sted at couchsurf. Eller sovet udenfor de sidste par dage her. 
Men det har nu også været dejligt at sove langs, øh, langs floden, lår og i nat. Der har jeg sovet det her lille skur i en øh, park. Det er lidt tidligt nu, men øh, jeg tror det er en god idé at komme op i god tid. Fordi øh, det er garanteret en båd eller sådan et eller andet om dagen, så jeg må hellere selv få duft, før der kommer nogen og får et chok, når der bare ligger sådan en hjemløs her. <laughs> øhm. Og så kan jeg også komme tidligere i gang og afsted, og det er fint nok. Jeg er faktisk ude i det. Lige ud og have noget morgenmad først et eller andet sted. Køb noget der. Yoghurt. Så det er bare daily. Det har pisse regnet hele natten, så det har altså virkelig været godt at have et sted med gulv og tag. Og så bare kunne ligge herinde i tørvejret og lytte, hvordan det bare har væltet ned. Ellers så går det sgu godt nok med det hele. Det øh, har ikke været noget problem at komme i gang igen efter en lang pause i Paris. Øhm, de nye støvler, de, øh, de er også fine. Mine fødder, de øh, har ikke rokket sig over dem. Jeg har ikke fået nogen vabler eller noget som helst. Det eneste der er, det er, at de er sådan lidt der kortskiftet i forhold til de andre. Så der falder tit noget småsten ned og sådan noget. Det, det, det er lidt irriterende, synes jeg. Men hvad fanden? Det kunne være så meget værre. Min største bekymring, det er, at jeg ikke rigtig får solgt nogle artikler eller noget. Jeg forstår ikke rigtig, hvorfor der ikke er nogen, der gider købe dem. Øh, men jeg tror, at det er fordi, at jeg skriver mig selv for meget ind i, <laughs> måske. Redaktører, de vil gerne have tingene, er sådan meget objektivt. Jeg forsøger også at forholde mig objektivt, men jeg, jeg indgår bare selv. Altså, jeg skriver mig selv ind i historien. Det er ikke min holdning. Det er bare mine observationer. Det er det, man kalder gunsaw-journalistik. Det er sgu da... Øh det gør det mere spændende og mere indgivende, synes jeg. Men øh, jeg ved selvfølgelig heller ikke, om det er bare det. Men det er lidt en bekymring, fordi at så længe jeg ikke kan tjene mine egen penge, jamen, øh, så kommer der på en eller anden tidspunkt til at være en grænse for, altså hvor, hvor meget videre jeg kan komme. Der skal jo mad på bordet. Og der skal også betales visum, når jeg kommer til Afrika. Så er der nogle bestemte lande, der skal visum til. Og så har jeg lige fået en mail i dag fra øh, en danske ambassadør i Nigeria, som jeg skrev til for lang tid siden. Jeg skrev inden jeg tog hjemmefra, og skrev til alle ambassaderne. Øh, og han fraråder på det kraftigste, at jeg tager til Nigeria. Han siger, at risikoen for at blive øh, overfaldet og kidnappet er stor i hele landet. Så nu har jeg lige spurgt tilbage, at hvis man nu vælger at gøre det alligevel, hvad han øh, så har, om man har nogle gode fif til, hvordan man kan gøre sådan en risiko lidt mindre. For eksempel sådan noget med at ikke at gå ud om natten osv. osv. Ja, et sted det skal jeg jo. Og øh, i dag der holder bestyrelsen for Warm for Water hjemme i Danmark, de holder et møde, deres første bestyrelsesmøde. Og det glæder jeg mig godt nok til at høre, hvad det ender med. Fordi at, øh, der skal altså til at ske noget der. Der er ikke, øh, der er ikke så skide meget gang inden. Så jeg håber, at de øh, får lagt nogle, øh, nogle arbejdsskemaer og få uddelt nogle, øh, nogle ansvarsområder, så vi kan få hele den her ammunition op og køre ordentligt. 
Så der er der en fyr, der har skrevet til mig i går. Øh, en fransk mand med ja, med nordiske rødder. Han skriver faktisk ikke, om han er fra Danmark eller Norge eller hvad, men han har et nordisk navn. Han skriver, at han øh, kunne godt tænke sig at join min tur fra nu af, og så gå med resten af vejen. Øh, der er flere, der har luftet den tanke før, men ham her, han virker meget seriøs. Han virker også utrolig politisk. Øh, jeg er egentlig ikke interesseret i nogen af delene. Jeg vil gerne holde det her meget upolitisk, og jeg vil også gerne som udgangspunkt gå selv. Det kan godt være, at øh, at han kan få lov til at gå med et stykke af vejen. Det er der også andre, der får lov til. Men jeg har ikke lyst til, at jeg skal have, skal have vedhængt på hele turen. Det er ikke det, er ikke det der er, er planen med det hele. Både fordi, at det er pisse irriterende at gå mere end en. Hvis det er det, man, hvis det er det, man laver, altså, så skal man hele tiden tage hensyn til, hvornår vil den anden holde pause, hvornår ved den anden, det ene og det andet og det tredje. Og også fordi, at, at på det personlige plan, så søger jeg lidt den der solitude der, for at det bliver den her pilgrimsrejse af. Øh, der går også lidt af, af det fascinerende af, ved at det er lige pludselig er en stor gruppe mennesker, frem for at det bare er en mand, der går. Og øh, frem for alt, Sidst men ikke mindst, så, så har man altså enormt meget nemmere ved at komme i kontakt med fremmede mennesker, når man er alene, end hvis man er i en gruppe. Folk de uh, indvender sig meget lettere til en, hvis man, hvis man går selv. Ja, yeah. skal vi komme ud i naturen? Så har vi også Det er ikke så lang tid siden, jeg har glemt en toilettaske ja, med nogen, jeg couchsurfede hos. Det er både godt og skidt. Der var alt for meget lort i den taske, som, uh, som man jo ikke skiller sig af med, fordi at det er stadigvæk brugbart. Men det fylder bare helvedes til, at man får det alligevel aldrig brugt. Men uh, sådan noget som en tandbørst og solcreme, det skal jeg jo have. Så det, det må jeg hellere få rekvireret et nyt sted igen. <laughs> jeg tror, skal jeg vil sætte mig deroppe i den der pavillon-ting og spise noget morgenmad. Do you have a good story? My story? Just some story. But, uh, I can uh, explain in French. In, in French. No, then we <laughs> no, don't understand in English, them. Yes. <laughs> But my English is not very good. Ah, oh, it's fine. Yeah. A good story. Just your story. That was also fine. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so I, I, I can't do two things. In the same <laughs> Multitasking. <time. laughs> It's very difficult. Okay. But uh, I like travel. I like me tra travel and um, uh, I think uh, my life is uh, the travel every day and uh, for everything you know when I go to the work I go to travel a little bit yeah you know so uh, each moment is very important 
And um, why do you use couchsurfing? Uh, yeah, I, I use couchsurfing in uh, a lot of countries. And uh, couchsurfing uh, for me is a way to meet people. Yeah, we have the the chance to uh, to have this um, uh, internet and everything. Uh, we can uh, and uh, we can uh, go with uh, a phone. Just this, I can meet uh, people in Brazil. Tomorrow I uh, I go in Salvador. Yeah, yeah, you can get in touch I with people I will go in, in all countries. Yeah, it's very easy. So it's for that I use uh, catchphrase. Now uh, it's three years. I I I didn't speak. I couldn't speak. I couldn't do anything. When did the accident happen? Uh, it was it's, it's gonna be four years. Four years ago. Yeah. And then from one day to the other, you just totally collapsed. It collapsed completely. And you couldn't speak. I couldn't and speak. You couldn't I I was in bed, so I was in a hospital for a whole year. It has to do with a lot of stress. I had a lot of stress. Okay. Because I had to do everything, not only uh, with my with with the children and things, but then I had to cook. I had to do everything, and I got to the point where I was, I was, I couldn't anymore. Do you have some hopes for the future? The ha hopes is that I, I can talk much more. Yeah. And this is a lot. And if I could have this, have what? The, the sound doesn't work. Ah, it doesn't work at all. Not at all. Okay. If I could have that to work, then it would be another mountain. But at the moment, it's nothing happened. Nothing. 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 Mm. Why? Why did it happen? I don't know. It shouldn't have happened. It happened. No. Now it's just about moving on, getting yeah. well yeah. again. Ah, but that that has always been like that. So. And learning from it. Yeah, learning from it. We have one, just one every every day is, is a. You never know what's going to happen afterwards and what happened before. You don't even want to know it because it happened. Yeah. So I'm just. So is it. that is that the. Is that the big lesson from it, that you should be aware that you never know what can happen tomorrow? So you should appreciate what you got? No, because no. I've been very much like that before too. Okay. Um, there's something I'm doing now that I didn't do before, it's I paint a lot. Yeah? Just with one hand. With one hand? I've got... If I've got uh, atelier up, up there? Yeah, but I've got... I gave it to people in my drawings, okay. but uh, I, I, I didn't do this before at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, from one place to the other, I started painting. And I mm. paint quite well. Okay. And I, I, I do this, I sit here and look at the... Is that what makes you happy? Yeah. To paint? Yeah. Mm. Håber der snart en indkomst på vej, enten igennem øh, at få noget tøjfirma op at køre, så er øh, ved at undersøge, hvordan, hvordan man kan det. Har øh, 
en kontakt til en spansk webshop, som meget gerne vil sælge noget uh, warm for water tøj. Og jeg har mødt en fyr i Tours, som er sindssygt god til at tegne, som er ved at designe uh, en, en t-shirt faktisk. Så ideen er at få, få lavet noget fedt design, og så få lavet mit eget tøj brand, og så få solgt nogle forskellige uh, t-shirts og så videre til nogle forskellige webshops hvor en del af overskuddet så går til Walking for Water og en del af det også går til mig for at jeg kan lave um, en anden plan som jeg går og uh, pusler med det er at lave sådan en uh, online magasin jeg forestiller mig cirka 5 skribenter der afleverer en månedlig artikel og så enten så laver det på den måde at uh, man kan købe medlemskab på det her blad, som vi deler imellem os sammen med en redaktør også, og måske en salgschef. Eller også, at vi øh, laver bladet gratis, altså online-magasinet gratis, og så håber på, at vi kan tjene penge på annoncer. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> There's uh otherwise it just finishes, you know? And the uh, the first the masterpiece which you are which you are living from now is the pink pepper. It's pink one. pepper, exactly. What made you uh, choose to make gin? I mean we are in cognac now. 
yeah. in France, where all the cognac comes from. So it, the obvious thing would be if you were distilling cognac. cognac. Well, I distilled, I started by distilling cognac uh, when I first moved here. I, I distilled cognac for two years. Uh, we distilled for uh, three of the big cognac houses. And it was quite a big distillery. We had 13 stills, 2,500 liters each. And um, that was really where I learned the basics, the basics, kind of the, the intricacies and the art in, in distilling. Um, and from there I decided to, you know, I wanted to do something of my own. I wanted to have my own distillery. It's a dream since I was a kid to have this. So I uh, looked into how best to do it, how I could, you know, you know, what sort of things I could do. And, um, and then I came up with this idea and of, of using the reduced pressure still because it's a bit easier to kind of get the extraction of exactly the sorts of flavors that you're looking for. Um, and uh, yeah, gin was the first place to start for me because it's really about the plants, as I was saying. It's really about the, the, the sorts of plants that you're, you're going to get out, the, the individual flavors. Uh, so I was saying yesterday, you know, it's really the expression of the spices of the botanicals that you're using. Cognac is the expression of, of the maître assembleur, uh, the maître de chez, so the person who's going to do the assemblage, it's the expression of the terroir, of the, the region, of the, 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 the soil, mm -hmm. uh, it's an expression of the fruit, uh, it's an expression of oak. Um, so you don't have so much playground as you have with gin? You do, but it's, it's more limited because there's a much stricter uh, it's a much stricter cahier des charges. It's a much stricter way of doing it, mm. uh, you know, and it can only be done in this area. I don't, you know, I may not live my entire life in cognac. No. You know, I may want to move somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, and what interests me in all of this is the flavor. As I, again, as I was saying, you know, it's it's really about the flavor here. It's not so much about the alcohol. Uh, but it's it's about being able to express all these different things through the palate. Mm -hmm. Um, and and really getting you know the assembling these individual flavors to to get explosion and explosion or an expression in the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's rather than being an expression of the soil and of the oak and of this and of that and everything, it's my expression. It's my art. And and on top of that, it's it's the expression of these plants that you know we've been given with such a massive array of of things that we can we can do. And gin really allows you to, to use all of them. It obviously okay. has to have juniper as the base, and then you can build on top of that, and you can play around with all different things. Hello! <laughs> Hello, Johnny! And are you uh, many walkers? No, it's just me. It's your project? Yeah, it's my... Uh, I came up with it, and I thought it was a good idea. Uh, so I made this organization behind it, Walking for Water, and the idea is that others can do the same thing and by time it will be easier because I'm getting now a big network that others can use in the future. Okay. And are you uh, currently raising funds for... How do you raise funds, basically? I, uh, I have a website where people can donate. But I, I hope that by time I will get a media, some kind of a media agreement. And through that it will be easier to get some big companies to be uh, head sponsors. Because okay. it's a lot of money I need. <laughs> Do you have a budget or the yeah. global amount you need? The system we want to make is uh, estimated to cost uh, 420,000 US dollars. So it's quite big, <laughs> but it's also it's 18,000 people who will benefit from it. What uh, what made you guys uh, come up with the idea of going the Camino? Uh, we had the idea two weeks ago. Okay. Two, one month ago. Very spontaneously. Sorry. Very spontaneously. Yes, exactly. And uh, it was the way to, uh, to spend holidays in a uh, close family uh, without friends or relatives. Uh, 
no sunbathing on the beach, uh, only uh, you know, uh, walking out together. Uh, yeah. And having uh, having a, not fun but uh, a strong moment uh, together. And as we are uh, Catholic, uh, I'm just going in front of you, okay. <laughs> so we don't have to turn around. As we are Catholic too. So you are seeing all the churches on the way? Or? Yes. And so when when it's exactly on the way. Yeah. Do you have a map of the guide. of the path? We have a okay. Guide okay. The One of the things that impress me very much when I travel around is the churches, big churches, small churches, but most of all old churches. I find them very impressive to see from the outside, from the inside, and uh, even though I'm not religious at all, um, I get some feeling of sanctuary when I come to a church. I like to go inside, look at the old paintings, uh, and statuettes, the architecture, it, it really interests me a lot. Um, one of the thoughts that come to my mind when I see all these uh, big, big architectural buildings that is built hundreds and hundreds of years ago is how much it must have uh, filled in the life of common people. When you see how many resources, uh, how many man hours that has been put into the building of churches. And I can't help thinking about where that time went, what people are spending their time on doing today instead, and how we could have been transferring that into better things. Uh, for instance, we can't, may, might not be able to agree on a specific religion, but maybe we can all agree on specific things in our different religions or non-religions. For instance, uh, that we should treat each other well, to take care of the ones in need. And if we spent in modern life just half of the time, half of the money, half of the energy people have been putting into the idea of religion in ancient times today, I think we could actually solve the poverty in the world. Uh, so that is also what Walking for Water is about. It's the idea of taking the time, spending the resources it takes to make the world a better place. And if we all try to integrate it in what we are doing already, what we like to do, it's not that hard. We need to bring faith back into modern life. Not faith in a specific God, but faith in each other. Faith in charity, faith that the world can be made a better place if we want to. Yeah, I, I, I. 